Hi, my name is John Dren. Welcome to another tutorial on Scratch. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at motion blocks and their various applications. So let's get started in Scratch. As usual, the first thing I'm going to do is come over here to the Delete tool and get rid of the cat. Next, we're going to create a new sprite. So let's come down to the bottom here. And I'm just going to make a small circle. I tend to like to do that in my tutorials. I don't know why, but I do. Now let's come over here and look at these motion blocks. The first one I'm going to talk about is if on edge bounce. And the reason I'm doing the last one first is because we're going to be using it and I don't want to have to explain it later. If on edge bounce means that if your sprite touches the edge of the viewing area, it bounces instead of flying into the wall and disappearing halfway into it, which it sometimes will do. So now let's come over here and look at the others. I'm going to come over here and put when flag is clicked because we need to have a closed top and I'm gonna come over to motion blocks oh well okay first I'll put in forever that way everything will work forever now move 10 steps will make it move 10 of those steps and you can tell that that's gonna be a very short distance so like if we come over here and we get rid of the forever for just a second and put in the put 10 steps it will just move 10 steps not very far however if we put the forever in then what will happen is it will forever move 10 steps and that means it'll do it forever so that's what I was talking about let's put in this if on edge bounce now when we do that it will bounce like this so if on edge bounce just means that it will bounce off the edges now let's look at these other motion blocks I've talked about move 10 steps turn blank degrees is pretty self-explanatory. You enter in the amount of degrees and it'll turn your sprite that number of degrees. These tell you to point in a certain direction, up, down, left, or right. This lets you go to a specific point. This one's very important. So if you go to a specific point, what that'll mean is like say, say you're starting a level and you need the circle to go to a specific point on the thing, then when you do it, it'll automatically go. So Oh, wait, hold on. Now, every time I do this, it'll go back. Now, let's come over here and talk about some of the other ones. Go to. Now, if we go to mouse pointer, it will automatically go to the mouse. Now, let's stick a forever in here so that it'll always go to the mouse. Now this is helpful if you're making like a sniper game and you need to have, you know, a crosshairs or something like that. It'll do that. Now, if there's other sprites, we only have one sprite. If there's more, then you can also have it go to that sprite. Here, this is glide. That's pretty self-explanatory. It'll glide to a certain place. There's the set X, change X and set y change y these are that's the x axis this is the y axis so it you can set them along that axis so that's pretty simple these just show you on the screen where they are on the screen or what direction they're pointing in if you have a variable it'll also show you that if they're circular like that then they'll show you now, this is one I didn't talk about, point to words. And let's say we point it towards mouse or pointer forever and move 10 steps. What do you think that's going to do? Let's make it 5 steps, so it's 4 steps, so it's slower. If it's doing that, then it's going to follow my mouse around, just like a little dog. The more steps, the faster it'll go. And if you do this, it'll just go into the wall like that. Now that's because it's pointing towards my mouse pointer and then moving four steps. Now, whenever my mouse pointer position changes, it will change as well automatically. So now let's make a new sprite and we'll make this a, a circle ball. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to make it a little interesting because we're going to make the make it so that you have to avoid these. So, okay, here's our second sprite. Now let's give it some simple, simple things here. Forever. Okay, mo turning. We want it to, we don't want it to just go left and right like I showed you earlier. You want it to turn a certain amount of degrees. But we're going to have it pick a random amount. And that's helpful in a lot of situations when you need something random. However, we're going to talk about that in another lesson. But I'm going to pick between 1 and 360 because that's the full range of degrees and have it pick. So then we'll have it forever move 10 steps. So now it'll just be bouncing around the screen. Oh yes, we have to put in a if on edge bounce, which I think I'm going to forget to do just to show you what happens. So see, it'll follow me and the other sprite goes into the wall. So let's put in an if on edge bounce and now you can see that they're moving around. Now right now you don't have to avoid it because if you touch it absolutely nothing will happen. Just like that. So let's make sprite 1 as I like to say allergic to sprite 2 and we're gonna do that by saying when this is clicked forever because we just don't want it to be in the first millisecond. Forever if and we're gonna say touching sprite 2 then stop all. Now I know this is getting away from motion blocks a little bit but just for the purposes if it's touching sprite 2 it ends. See? Now the easy thing we can do here is duplicate. Oops, I deleted it. Alright, let's go ahead and make it again. No big deal. Let's come over here. Now having irregular shaped things is good too because the way it bounces off of the wall makes it a little more interesting. So now we'll have it turn pick random 1 to 360. All right, here we go. Now, coming back over here, as you can see, there, oh wait, let's come back to our first one now and make it allergic to Sprite 2, or if it ever touches Sprite 2, we'll stop all. And stop all is the way you end your game. And now we're gonna duplicate it. See, we're taking this stamp tool and we're making them. And you can also come down here, not clicking delete, but clicking duplicate, it'll make more of them. Now when we start, they're all bouncing around. Now I can touch some of them because remember I made Sprite 1 allergic to Sprite 2. So the script is only working for Sprite 2. Sprite 3 and 4 and 5, they, they're fine. It's kind of like a minefield. But if I touch the wrong one and the wrong one hits me, that's Sprite 2 right there because that's the one that hit me. Now if we were smart and we wanted all of them to work, then we would have come to Sprite 2 and made it allergic to Sprite 1. That way when we copied it, they would all be allergic to Sprite 1. But it depends on what type of game you're making. My next tutorial is going to be on making a missile follow game using these techniques. And after that, we're going to be looking at looks. I know that it really doesn't have anything to do with anything, but I want to make it. So there's looks. Thank you.